So what we want to do is we want to see that there's a God who's out there who wants to participate in our lives. In Exodus 15, 26, after the Israelites had um, gotten across the Red Sea, they see that they were delivered from that. They have no water out in the wilderness, and they get to this pool of Meribah, and they're saying, hey, Moses, let's get a little water here, but we can't drink this because this is poisonous. So what the Lord does, he shows Moses a, a specific tree to throw into the water, and it purifies the water for them. And God is identified here for the first time as Jehovah Rapha. This is Exodus 15, 26. And it says, for I am the Lord who heals you. You see, God wants to heal you. God wants to provide for you every single thing that you need. He wants to make sure that he is the source for those things. And if he's a God that loves us, then what we can do is we can identify those things that God has given to us. And in this case, we can see that he's the God of healing. So if I'm looking for healing, I found it. If I know that he's the God of prosperity where he fed 5,000 people and had 12 basketfuls left over, then we know that he's a God of overabundance. We also know that he provides us with the love that we need for every single thing that we need so we can understand that God loves us. And if I first, and if the first thing that I do is to recognize that God loves me, that's gonna make all the difference in our lives. So I gotta ask you the question, how has God demonstrated his love for you? So my name is Stephen Smith, and I believe that I have a word from God for you today, and that word is desire. That's right, we're gonna talk a little bit about desire. What is it that your heart desires? I was doing a study a couple of days ago, and I took a look at spontaneous remission and how that happens with people. Now, there's nothing wrong with me, but I do have a friend that is suffering from stage four cancer, and I was thinking, well, I need to take a look at what spontaneous remission actually does. So what I did was I looked at a scientific journal, and they found six different areas that actually helped us to understand these things. And if I understand what those processes are, then I know that I could actually apply that. Here's a spectacular thing. I found out that it all is based on the Word of God. That's right, the Word of God can actually help us with spontaneous remission. But I also found out something else as well. I found out that all the desires that we have in our hearts and our minds can actually follow these same six principles. These same six principles will change our lives as we go through them. And if we apply these things to our lives, I really do encourage you to do that. You're going to see that you will get exactly what it is that your heart desires for. Now, there are certain things that fall into this category, and you're going to see how this will, this will all work. But we can go to Psalms 37, 4, and this is a promise that we receive from God. It says that if we delight ourselves in the Lord, that he will give us the desires of our heart. How good is that? If God knows what our desires are, and if he wants to give those things to us, then we would think that he would give them to us. Our part is to believe that he's going to do that, right? So what we want to do is we want to see what the processes are and how we can find those things out in the Word of God. And once we're able to do that, then we're going to start seeing this phenomenal opportunity to be able to see God working in our lives. Now, as usual, what I want to do is I want to ask you some questions to get us into the right frame of mind to be able to go through this process. But the first thing that we want to know is I need to know what you're believing for. Wait a second. You need to know what you're believing for. If you can find out or if you can understand what it is that you're believing for, then that's the the part that we're looking forward to. That's our vision for the future. That's what we're seeing as, this is what I want to accomplish. Sometimes it's just a closer walk with God. Other times it's a, I'm believing for my healing. Other times I'm believing for my bills to be paid. And sometimes it's, I'm believing to understand more about a specific scripture that I found in the Bible. So what I wanna do then is I wanna take a look at what the Bible says and what it helps, it tells me I can understand within it. So let's take a look at what, that, what the Bible says in relationship to what you're believing for. Second question that I want to ask you is, is how, has been, how has God been involved in your life? What's your relationship like with him? In other words, do you have a good working relationship with God? Does he have a good working relationship with you? Are you thinking that God doesn't really want you to have the things that you want in, within your heart? Or are you believing that God wants the very best for you? I mean, there's certain things that we could take a look at. Is he God? Is he God father? Is he God daddy? How does God interact with you? What's your relationship like with him? Because that's going to make a determination as to how these things come to pass within your life. The third thing that I want to ask you is, is what do you believe that the Bible says about receiving anything from God? If you knew that you were going to receive something from God, how do you go about that process, or do you just receive it? I mean, there are certain things that we all believe, and there are certain theological differences in everything that we've learned, but the 
word of God will help direct us and guide us in that path. So I, so we need to know, we need to understand what the Bible says about these things. Now we're going to talk a lot about um, scriptures in the Bible that actually relate themselves to the things that we're discussing. But what do you believe? And if I know what that is, if you know what that is, then you're going to be able to find much more um, commonality in the things that we talk about here in the next few minutes. The fourth question that I want to ask you is, how does God give us the desires of our hearts? The second part of that question is, is, does he actually do that? And that's the desire that I was talking about. That's the word that I believe that the Lord has given to me for you today, that he wants to give you these things. All we need to do is believe that he has something for us. So let's take a look at those six different areas that are all common in spontaneous remission. And we're going to find that these six different items are also the way that we receive from God. Let's take a look at those things. So what we want to do before we, we go into these six different areas is we want to take a look at Matthew 7, 7 through 8. Look at what it says. Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, that door will be open. We have that promise from God that if I keep on asking, that if I keep on seeking, that if I keep on knocking, that door is going to be open for me. I'm going to find what I'm looking for, and I'm going to be given what it is that, I'm, that I want. So let's take a look at these six different areas that are all common in these areas, and we're going to discuss each of these and find a scripture that is actually relevant to them. The first step in spontaneous remission is this. Deepening one's belief in God and a God who loves them. You see, we have to understand that God loves us. And if I know what that is, and if I know that God loves me, then I know that God is going to want to provide for me. And this is a deepening understanding of that. So if you're looking for something that you know that you need from God, isn't it a good place to start on the love of God and finding out how much God loves you by reading his word and seeing what he tells you here? We're going to talk about that in just a little bit. Second, the second thing is this. What we want to do is we want to make sure that we're trusting that it was answered when we asked. In other words, God has already sent it to us. In other words, it was immediate. In other words, God has already provided it for us. I just don't see it in my life right now. But we want to start acting like that's the way that it is. And this is all common in spontaneous remission, but it's also common in everything that we receive from the Lord. The third thing in receiving from God, we have to release negative and repressive emotions. If I've got a negative or repressive emotion that's keeping me back or hindering me from something, it's going to keep you from God's very best for you. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of all these negative thoughts. I want to get rid of these negative emotions. I want to make sure that I've got the whole forgiveness thing down and I'm not allowing that to eat myself up. You see, cancer is actually fed by fear and it's caused, fed by hate. It's fed by... Um, indecision. There's all these other things that it, it actually becomes a part of. But if I release all those negative and, and repressed emotions, if I get rid of the fear that, oh my gosh, what, what's my funeral going to be like? Who's going to take care of my kids? If I release all of those things and say, God's got that. God's got it covered. I'm just going to leave here living. I got that from somebody else. But this is how this all works. The fourth thing is in relationship to receiving is the feelings of love, joy, happiness, thankfulness, that we've already received it. So we have to act as if we've already received it. Does that sound familiar? Right? We call things that be not as though they were, and we'll talk a lot about this, and I do have a couple of scriptures that can ha actually help us in that. The next thing is, is that they change their intake. Now, I talked about changing their diet in, in relationship to cancer, but we can also change our intake too, can't we? Can't we say, okay, my intake is now going to be everything about God. I'm going to find out what he says about the things that I desire and see if that changes my desires and see how these things work in our lives, how I go about getting these things, but it's all got to be based off of my diet here in the word of God. The sixth thing is this. I want to make sure that I supplement. Now, they talk about supplementation for different things. I can take different vitamins. I can take different things that help change the way that I look at things. But we can also supplement our faith with certain things. You're saying, Steve, I thought that our faith was basic, that it, what we had was what we got, and that's all that we need. I don't need to supplement my faith to get into heaven. But Peter talks about this in Second Peter 1, and, and we'll go there as well and see how we can supplement our faith with different things so that we can start receiving what it is that God had in store for us. So let's dig into the Word. Knock the dust off your Bible. Let's take a look at what it says and help us understand that just a little bit more. 
So what we want to do is we want to see that there's a God who's out there who wants to participate in our lives. In Exodus 15, 26, after the Israelites had um, gotten across the Red Sea, they see that they were delivered from that. They have no water out in the wilderness, and they get to this pool of Meribah, and they're saying, hey, Moses, let's get a little water here, but we can't drink this because this is poisonous. So what the Lord does, he shows Moses a, a specific tree to throw into the water, and it purifies the water for them. And God is identified here for the first time as Jehovah Rapha. This is Exodus 15, 26. And it says, for I am the Lord who heals you. You see, God wants to heal you. God wants to provide for you every single thing that you need. He wants to make sure that he is the source for those things. And if he's a God that loves us, then what we can do is we can identify those things that God has given to us. And in this case, we can see that he's the God of healing. So if I'm looking for healing, I found it. If I know that he's the God of prosperity where he fed 5,000 people and had 12 basketfuls left over, then we know that he's a God of overabundance. We also know that he provides us with the love that we need for every single thing that we need so we can understand that God loves us. And if I first, and if the first thing that I do is to recognize that God loves me, that's gonna make all the difference in our lives. So I gotta ask you the question, how has God demonstrated his love for you? So the next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we're trusting that our prayer was answered. And we can, we can take a look at 1 Peter 2.24, especially in relationship to not only the forgiveness of our sins, but also our healing. Let's take a look at what it says. It says, He who himself bore our sins in his own body on a tree, that we, having died to sin, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Not are going to be healed, not seeing it in the future, not receiving my healing, I'm already healed. I have to believe that my prayer was answered the moment that I, I did that. God provided us Jesus Christ for not, not only salvation, but all our other spiritual blessings in this life. And that can include our prosperity. It can also include our bills being paid. It can also include our healing. There's all these things that God is doing, but we have to see God as the great I am, not the great I was or the great I'm going to be. So our day tomorrow is going to be our day today, and God is the God, God is I am tomorrow, which means he's present with you even now. So if he's provided that for you, he's already, he's already given it to you. We already have it. We've received it because he is present with you. He'll never take any of those things away from us. What things in your life do you see is already completed by Christ on the cross? What has he completed? Is it just our salvation or did he do a little bit more there while he was on the cross? He took all of our pain, all of our suffering. He took all these things from us. Shouldn't we have a different attitude about what Jesus Christ has done for us? So we also wanna make sure that we release negative and toxic emotions. I'm gonna go someplace where maybe some of us are saying, well, I'm not sure about that or whatever, but let's, let's just see what the Bible says about this. Apparently, we can ask for anything. Mark 11, 24, and 25 tells us this. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you receive it, it will be yours. But when you are praying, first forgive anyone holding a grudge against you so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. Seems like there's a little bit of a condition here, right? We want to make sure that we're forgiving others so that we can make sure that we can receive what it is that God has in store for us. And that may be forgiveness and that it might be what we need. Maybe it's our healing. Maybe it's something like that. These negative and toxic emotions are maybe what have actually caused the problem in your life and you're trying to get rid of them. So what we want to do is we want to get rid of those things, cut them out of our lives and start bringing in what God has planned for us. What actions do you believe are holding you back from receiving what God's best is for you? So we also want to understand that we can do the same thing. And if I know that Jesus Christ has forgiven me of my sins so that I can go to heaven, then I know that he'll also heal me. You may say, Steve, where'd you get that? How about Psalm 103, 2 and 3? Let's take a look at what that says. It says, let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things that he's done for me. He forgives me of all my sins and heals me of all my diseases. The first thing that the psalmist does here is he actually praises the Lord. And then he doesn't forget what the Lord has already done for him. So if I'm praising the Lord for something that I have not yet seen manifest itself in my life, but I know that God has given them to me, it's going to change the way that I look at things. And I'm going to start expecting to see this. Your body's going to respond to this as well by going out and searching different ways that it can see these things happen in your life. And it'll actually begin to heal itself because that's the way that God made you. So what we want to do is we want to grab a hold of this and say, I can praise the Lord and I can thank him for what he's done for me. 
When was the last time that you took God for his word? I mean, it says here that he forgave us of all of our sins. Doesn't that also mean he's going to heal you of all your diseases? So we want to make sure that we take this for what it tells us. God would be unjust if he didn't forgive you of your sins and also heal you. And yet we see that this verse tells us that that's exactly what he does. So the next thing that we can see is that we need to change our intake. We need to change what we're taking into our body. Now we know that changing our diet can actually change our lives. If I get rid of all the sugar in my life, and I know that sounds like sacrilege, and you're saying, Steve, I need a Bible verse for that. Well, don't worry, I'm telling you that sugar isn't good for you, okay? And if you get it out of your life, it's gonna make all the difference in your world. And what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we change our diet. It's gonna change the way that we look at things, but look at what Jesus told Satan. This is Matthew 4.4. 4. He said, but Jesus told him, no, the scriptures say people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. How important is that? If I change my diet to nothing but what the word of God tells me, then what's gonna happen? I'm gonna get what the word of God tells me. If I look through the gospels and I look through what Jesus had done and what Jesus provided for us, if I look and see how Paul acted and the way that Paul had seen things, if I read Peter's epistles to us, we can see that we've got all these precious promises and we're gonna talk about that in a minute, but we can see that the word of God is actually gonna do this. And if this is my diet, if I change my diet to this and I stop watching, oh, I don't know, social media, no, these videos are okay. But what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we stop our, our feasting on social media and stop that scrolling and stop wasting all of our time and all of our lives on all these stupid things. Rather than that, why not spend time in the Word of God and allow this to change the way that you look at things? Has, has there ever been a time in your life when God's Word sustained you in a difficult time? You know, you're going through times and you're going through difficulties and you say, wait a second, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Oh, I can use the Word of God to be able to do these things that I know that God wants me to do. It says that he's going to reward me for the good things in my life. And I know that there are bad things that he doesn't want me to do. I can walk in the spirit rather than in the flesh. These are all things that we can do based off of what the word of God tells us. And if I change my intake, it's going to change the way that I look at things. So the last thing that we talked about is, is that we want to make sure that we're taking supplements. Now, these supplements are the things that we know that we can take that actually supplement the lack of vitamins or the lack of minerals or those things that we know that we need in our lives, but we just don't eat enough of these types of foods for them. And there's lots of research that de demonstrates how important magnesium is for us or how important salt is for us or all these other kinds of things that we want to put into our lives. But I'm not talking about supplements. I'm not talking about going out and getting some kind of pre-workout or something like that. Hey, I need to go get some more collagen or whatever it is. I'm talking about supplements to our faith. And you may say, now, Steve, my faith is only in Jesus Christ and, on, and what he's done for me on the cross. Okay, I believe that, and I'm with you on that. But let's take a look at this. This is 2 Peter 1, 5 through 7. Look at what Peter tells us. Now, this is the same Peter that walked on water, whose shadow healed people. So let's, say, let's see what Peter has to say about faith. In view of all of this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with patient endurance, and patient endurance with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love for everyone. Sounds like pretty good advice, doesn't it? Peter's telling us how to live this Christian life here on this earth. He's not telling us how to get into heaven. We know that it's by faith in Jesus Christ alone. That's it. That's the only way that we can get into heaven. However, if I supplement my faith with all these other, other actions, if I start making these proclamations about, okay, from now on, I am going to have a generous provision of moral excellence, of knowledge, of self-control, of patient endurance, of godliness, of brotherly affection, and love for everyone, if I put those things into my life, how's that gonna change things? This supplement, the way that you look at life, is gonna provide you with all the things that you've ever wanted in your life, and guess what's gonna happen? things that you ever wanted in your life are gonna start aligning themselves with what God wants in your life. And if you start pursuing those things, you are only gonna be happy with those things. Have you ever bought something and said, I absolutely have to have this. That I, I have to have this computer. I have to have every single thing that it does. It's the most perfect thing that I could ever use in my life. You spend like 30 hours just researching every single thing about this. You get the computer and a week later it's out in the garage sale. So, yeah, I don't need that. Yeah, I don't, didn't really want that. Um, 
That dress, that dress that I had to have, it's absolutely my size. Oh, it highlights the color of my hair, and it really goes well with the shoes and the purse that I have, right? So we take a look at that, and we say, yeah, I got that dress, and I haven't even worn it. It's sitting in the thing, and, and I'm going to give it away to Goodwill. I mean, you see all these things. We get what we want, and then we actually we get what we think we wanted, and it wasn't ever that, that what we actually wanted. But if we supplement our faith with all these different things that Peter talked about, we're going to start seeing that we're going to start getting the things that we actually wanted, the actual things that we needed, and God's going to give you this uh, holy satisfaction in all of those things. So what are you supplementing your faith with? Are you supplementing it with anything? Is it from God, or are you making this up as you go along? I mean, there's different ways that we can look at this, but how do you supplement your faith in all these things? I'll tell you what, let's do an exercise to see if we can we can update these supplements within our lives. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to see if it's right for a child of God to ask the Father for something. Why do you think that is? Why do you think it's right for us to ask God for something? Why do you think that it's wrong for us to ask God for something? Well, I just want to be humble. Francis of Assisi, he told us that, you know, we should give up everything so that we can serve the Lord. And um, I saw that Jesus told the rich young ruler to do that, but Zacchaeus didn't give up everything but he was blessed and the other one wasn't. Um, what does the Bible really say about it? We want to ask ourselves these questions because that will make all the difference in our lives. I got to believe that if I'm going to get something from God, I got to believe that he actually wants me to have it. Next question I want to ask you is, is what's your greatest why? Why do you want this? Now, here's the trick. Let's say that you want a million dollars. We all would want a million dollars, right? Why? So I'm going to ask myself a second why. Why do I want a million dollars? Well, it's so that I don't have to worry about providing for my family. Okay, well, why do you want to do that? Well, you know, God's kind of busy, and I don't want him to have to provide for me, so I'm just going to make sure that he gives me everything all at once. Does that sound familiar, like the prodigal son? But anyway, so we see all these things. We continue to ask ourselves why. Why so that I can give it to the poor? Why so that God will be proud of me when I get to heaven? Why? So that I've honored God with everything that I have. If I ask myself why seven times, I'm going to get down to the root of why I want something, and then we'll see whether or not it's really worth it or not. And you're going to convince yourself one way or the other why these things are important to you. Third thing that we want to do is we want to say, what have we already received from God that we asked for from him? Have you asked him for a godly spouse and you received it? That's a pretty good reason to believe that he's going to do this again if you ask him for something else. If you believe that you've asked him for healing of a cold or COVID-19 or something screwy like that, we can see that he actually provided those things for us and you got healed and whole and complete and everything worked out perfect. You can see that God provided those things for you. How about salvation? You ask him for salvation, you believe that you're going to heaven, that you're already saved, that you're trying to bring other people with you. You've already received those things as well. So these are all things that we've already received from God that we may have asked from him. We just want to write those things down so I can make that list and say, wow, I've already gotten these things. Won't God also give me these things? He loves me, right? Fourth question. What we want to do is we want to write down the things that we're believing God for. And next to them, list the thinking that's keeping you from what, you, what you're asking for. If you're asking for healing, what's keeping you from being healed? Is it your belief that God doesn't want you healed, that God doesn't do that anymore? Or is it your belief that God really wants to heal you, that he's done all these things, maybe I've got something wrong with me and that's why this is happening? Well, if you change all those attitudes and you follow these six processes that we just talked about, you should be able to receive that. But you have to identify what those things are. So if you write them down and then you have them there in front of you, you've got a list of things to work on, right? Based on these things, I want you to see Mark 11, 22, and 23, and it says, So Jesus answered them and said to them, Have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe the things that he says will be done, he will have whatsoever he says. So this is, these are really, really good words, because Jesus tells us anyone, and we should have whatever we ask for, these are all good promises for us, and I can say, wow, but I haven't seen it happen. Well, have you applied these six different processes that we can see when we apply these things to our lives? And we're going to recognize that God wants us to have these things. You know, using all these tools and using all these different opportunities to be able to see how God works in our lives will actually change the way that you receive from him. And that's what I want for you, is for you to receive every single thing that God wants for you to have. 
And I'm pretty sure that God wants exactly the same thing. Let's make a difference in our lives and start believing that God wants to give us some really good, cool things. So based on these things, this is the word that I believe that the Lord's given to me for you today. And that word is this. I want you to believe me for something. I don't care what that is, but believe that I want to give them to you. Get Change the way that you're thinking and start receiving every single perfect promise that I've given to you. Look at my word, it's there. So make a difference in your life. Use these tools to go out and be that miracle going someplace to happen.